G'day, you're listening to another edition of the Bloody Legends with Jim and myself, Jai, that Aussie metal guy. You be a legend, hit that like and subscribe so you can keep up to date with all the great interviews and guests. Cheers, legends. Okay, then. All right, G'day. man. How the bloody hell are you all going? It's time for another edition of the Bloody Legends with my awesome co-host, Jim, and myself, Jai, that Aussie metal guy. And today mm-hmm. we are getting to catch up with Eric Kaplan from Thunderbird Divine out of Jim's area there in Philly as we're chatting. Correct. You're about an hour and 50-ish. Yeah, two hours. I don't know. It depends on the term. From from where you're at, where you're in Chambersburg, PA? Yeah. Yeah, give or take. Give or take. Um, Sorry, I'm just changing my name. I'm doing the kiss thing where like you never miss an opportunity. (laughs) You never miss the opportunity to say the name of your band. Right. Thunderbird Divine. So how how did Thunderbird Divine? How, how did it all start, man? Like, where did this all begin? How did it from? start? Because Okay. Yeah. So um, I had been in a band called uh, Wizard Eye. Um, oh, first of all, thank you for having me in your, uh, on your uh, program. Um, so I had been in a band called Wizard Eye for a long time. I was since like from 2007 to 2016. So like nine years, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, we did our... All right, we put out we put out some good records and we played a bunch of shows. We were getting some good respect and stuff like that. But um, that band, you know, bands break up, you know, um, right. and uh, so we split up. And then uh, I was looking around to find something else to do, find another band. And um, I had some friends who were in a band called Skeleton Hands that we had played with a bunch of times. And I was like, oh, their drummer was pretty good. If I needed to start a new band, I could, you know, if that guy's available, I could get him. So I shot him a note. I was like, you know, hey, Mike, what's good? Like, you down for some jamming? And I'm, he, I'm like, he's like, yeah, let's do it. And then I go like, well, what happened with the rest of, you, rest of you guys? Are you still around? And he's like, I'm still jamming with those guys. We just don't have a singer. And I was like, well, why don't you, why don't we do this? You know, right. meld our powers. Because they were a whole band without a singer. Mm-hmm. And I was a singer slash guitar player without a band. So Perfect. we got together and it was a good hang. The guys are nice. Um, they're responsible adults. They're very outgoing. And they already had, a, this is funny. They already had a rehearsal space, literally one hallway away from where my other band had been rehearsing. <laughs> so like literally it was like, go down the hallway, go down, turn the corner, open another Perfect. door. So wait, it gets funnier. So that's how we started out. And that's the, that's the lineup that we recorded the first album with um it was me and the other and the skeleton hand boys and um went through a couple years that way um the other guitar player that was in the band had to quit which was fine he has you know he has like he got he got married he had another kid and he has a very busy job he works for uh an aerospace engineering company he's very busy all the time he's Mm. great he's a great player but he does. He, I mean, he's also honest with himself. I don't have the time for this shit. So sure. um, we let him go. And then we got a keyboard player because that's sometimes what happens. And um, then the bass player had to quit because he moved away to South Carolina. And we got a new bass player. And the crazy serendipity about it is when I got in touch with him, I was like, so like, where do you about? Like, where do you rehearse and stuff? He's like, oh, I have a room at this rehearsal space. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Where's your room? <laughs> And he's like, it's I'm in room six. And I'm like, I am in room seven. How do I not know you? <laughs> so we met up, we jammed. He's a great guy. Um, we had a great time playing. And uh first he just moved his stuff across the hallway and jammed with us in our room. <laughs> and then the whole his room opened up. He had a, his room across the hallway. His room opened up. One of the bands left. He's like, Do you guys wanna jam in in my room? And his room's much nicer with a better PA and everything and much cleaner and, you know, didn't look like, doesn't smell like a sack full of fucking rock raccoon assholes. Sorry. Wallaby assholes. um, But, um, it just, yeah. So we moved across the hallway and now we rehearse. Um, and the extra funny thing is that's the room I used to rehearse in when I joined one of my first bands back in the day, I rehearsed in that room. Um, many years ago like back in like 2006 oh wow i, I rehearsed huh. in that band in that room and so it's just weird coming full circle but you know so now we have a solid unit it's me on guitar and vocals uh josh solomon on bass 
uh, Jack Falkenbach on keys and Michael Stewart on drums. And nice. that's the four of us. And then, you know, we bring in guests for recording, but we're the core, you know, we're the core yes. of it. So that's how we came to be. Yeah, that's definitely. Brilliant. Yeah, well, I was talking to Jim before you jumped in. I said, man, I jumped, had, I fucking sparked up and listened to a little bit of the Thunderbird Divine, like the whole collection, mm. and just got totally lost in it. Like, as I was saying to Jim, like, it's a doom stoner metal band, but it also has these moments of, like, where it goes real bluesy, you know, you yeah. feel the funk in it. It has all these different elements, man. I'm keen to hear some of the artists and bands that have kind of influenced and inspired you as a musician. Um, okay. Um, well, I mean, I, and you know, it's funny, it's cause, um, you know, for the genre, I mean, and I love, I've been playing this kind of music for a very long time and it's very mm -hmm. real for me, yep. but I do yeah. think there's a major shortcoming for a lot of the artists in the genre of Stoner Doom in that it's like their influences, like they're so stuck on the canon of what it, what's, appropriate to like when you're a stoner rock band right sure so it's like people are like you ever hear that thing people say um you can only trust yourself in the first six black sabbath albums <laughs> right yeah, yeah that, that's yeah. like a thing you can see that on a t-shirt yeah. sometime yeah, um, yeah yeah and i don't disagree with that but i feel like they a lot of bands act like that's it there was black sabbath we can't list anything else right right there yeah. was black sabbath there was motorhead and maybe there's Led Zeppelin, mm -hmm. you know, but like you kind of have to stop there. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and so like I think it, it gets a little samey. It gets a little stale, you know, and I don't think there's anything wrong with a song that's like one riff, like Electric Wizard. They'll play one riff for 20 minutes and it's fucking awesome. But yeah. like they're Electric Wizard for a reason. They are some kind of shaman that they can manage to pull that off. And oh, I'll yeah. still listen to it for 20 minutes. Um, I, I I guess the big thing was is like we wanted to push things a little further and take all of our influences and put them in there. So like, I mean, I'm not I can't really speak for the other guys, but I will say like for me, um, there's Santana, yeah, there's, right, uh, yeah. Joni Mitchell. I love Joni Mitchell. Um, nice. There's Monster Magnet big monster magnet fan monster magnet my dude jim from north jersey bunch yeah of, uh, bunch of germans and, Ita and italians in that band i um, uh we're, we're actually good friends with them we're especially bob oh yeah nice and we're they're, friends they're, with At atomic bitch wax too yeah oh yeah i played with atomic bitch wax yeah. for several years back. they're those awesome are our, they're those so are our boys yeah man there you go there you go not surprising awesome. yeah so um but like bands <laughs> like that um, but like even like more on like the chill side of things, like I mean, I, I can't believe people don't name drop Hendrix anymore, but I love Jimi Hendrix. Oh, um, yeah. you know, um, but also I, I like some old funk like Mandrill, uh, James oh, Brown, yeah. of course, Parliament Funkadelic, Funkadelic. As a matter of fact, most of my shows recently I've been wearing a Funkadelic t shirt, or I wear this one that says Space is the Place, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um funk is so and, cool and, me uh, and jim sorry eric um just jump in there quickly yeah, funk is so cool man we and jim we mainly do rock and metal on this but we'll chat to anyone mm, we interviewed anyone a guy called michael gabriel he was like the godson of prince and he's he's dad, sheila e's guitarist sheila e's guitarist yeah. oh, he's, he's gotta be legit yeah. Yeah. michael gabriel oh, he's, man he's he awesome was, dude yeah. he was such a cool guy man it was cool for me to jump into that world of funk and soul oh yeah, and oh, yeah. blues it was a hell of a lot of fun and, 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 and speaking you. of speaking of prince that's another huge influence i grew up loving prince i'm probably a little bit older than you guys but when i was in my freshman year of high school my first year of high school so i was 15 14 purple okay. rain came out and i lost okay. my fucking mind like such a good oh, movie. yeah and also am amazing music prince was a genius you know, yeah. um, and um, and you know other things like, you know, the band War. Oh, huge fan, Edwin Starr, dude. 
Yeah, Edward yeah. Starr and War. No, no, the yeah. band War. Yeah, yeah. Not, not. Oh, not oh, War. oh, 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 oh. I got gotcha. you. I'm you know, sorry. Like, That's Disco my mistake. Kid, Lowrider. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly. Yeah, what you those mean. guys. <laughs> no, no, big, but yeah, big influence. Insert um, foot. <laughs> no, it's okay. Roger and Zap. Uh, yeah, oh, that's oh yeah, one. bounce to the yeah. ounce. More bounce to the ounce is a bad motherfucker, and yeah. great shows, incredible showman. Yeah, you know, um, Jungle Love. More stay on the uh, time. Kind Jungle of stuff. Love was the time. Yeah, that was good, but that kind of I'm saying that kind of yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. No, that, that all that like funky stuff with the horns yeah. and everything. I love that shit. Um, and then there's other stuff that you know, like lately we've been getting Deep Purple uh, comparisons, and I think it's because of the keys. Ooh. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Um, but yeah, it's like so a mishmash. And then there's like all this other mess where it's like, uh, I don't know if you guys know a band called Flower Traveling Band. They were uh, supposed to be the Japanese version. They were supposed to be the Japanese Black Sabbath. Oh, OK. Um, but like a lot of things that happen in Japan, they tried to do like a Black Sabbath thing. Right. And then it's filtered through Japanese culture and it ended up very fucking weird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, it, well, I mean, because like it wound up very fucking weird because their 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 uh their view of, of things is like myopic. So they only see it a certain way. Um, right. and so that's right. the influences, they just know the the band. So like and it's always funny when the this dude is the singer um for the band was like a male model. It was like, they came out in 1969. The singer was a male model. He's half African-American and half Japanese. So he had a giant wow. Afro. Yeah. And he sang really high, like Robert Plant. <laughs> and Amazing. the guitar player, okay. yeah. And the guitar player plays this bizarre thing. It's like half sitar, half guitar. I think he invented it. Anyway, and then like, they write like songs. About like, yeah, yeah, it's great stuff. Um, yeah. It's really, it's it's wild. Well, yeah. And, um they're um they have songs about they literally have songs about hiroshima and wow. about you know well i mean think about that um well, like we don't have that experience in the u.s except for like the civil war and the revolutionary war we don't have the sure. experience of our entire country being fucking decimated people plus yeah right, right. not to mention the anniversary the, for that actually speaking right of. exactly not to mention the um like the amount of radi radiation poisoning, which is something oh, sure. you can't see. Imagine a monster you can't see. Yep. Right. You know what I mean? And it kills people. So like their shit is just weird because they're Japanese, you know? Right. Um, um, speaking of which, another Japanese band that I'm a huge fan of, uh, Church of Misery. Do you know them? Nice. Write that down. No, I will. Now, yeah, they're, see, again, very strange, like Japanese bands, they love to be fans. Japanese yeah. Folks in general, they love to be fans of things, and they also love to like be dedicated to a, a bit, right? So yes. their whole thing is they're very Black Sabbath oriented, but they're okay. also obsessed with serial killers. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So, okay. So every song <laughs> is based on a serial killer. You see what oh, I'm saying? Interesting. I've heard that yeah. name. I because I, I thought you were about to say Acid Mother's Temple because that's no, another. No, those guys one. are great too. But no, yeah, Church of Mystery, yeah. And it's Church like, of it's real riff heavy, yeah. uh, like real gnarly. And they, oh, they do a Sir Lord Baltimore cover. Like they just like. Big fan know, of them, dude. Yeah. 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 They do uh, nice. Master Heart Heartache, you know. Oh, okay. And, uh, it's interesting to hear this Japanese guy with his thick Japanese accent sing Doing Master Sir Heartache. Lord Baltimore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's crazy. And it's, yeah. So. I mean, I'm definitely not saying all of the things that I like that or have influenced me. Also, oh shit, Queen, big influence Queen, on me. Yeah, huge uh, influence. Oh, dude, yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Brian May is like, I mean, if Brian May said my name out loud, I'd fucking shit my pants. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, seriously, because he's. I mean, first of all, everything I've ever seen of him is that he's an amazingly cool guy. He's yeah, arguably one of the best guitar players that ever lived. And to add to top things off. He's like a PhD in astrophysics. physics. He's a scientist, yeah. He's That's yeah, and, and he's and he's also been knighted. Yeah, yeah. So he's Sir Brian May. Um, right, That's a lot of shit. And then the absolute icing on the cake is he's besties with Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath. Right. Yeah. They're best yeah. friends. Like, there's always pictures of the two of them like hanging out together. Yeah, yeah, hanging out. Yeah. Um, 
And um, so, I mean, I love that. And also you can't, like Queen is one of those, actually Queen could, you could say is probably one of my biggest influences. So when, when you hear like weird hinky shit in Thunderbird Divine, yeah, yeah. chances are it's because I said, ooh, let's put a piano in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Or, you know what I mean? Or I'll be like, does this part need a sitar? I think it does, you know? Right, um, right. Does anyone have a harpsichord patch? You know, like that kind of shit. I love that. Um, all the Queen yeah. stuff. So to answer your question with a very long answer, those are the things that I'm- um, Perfect. That, that, yeah, that that's that's how sort of, and then the other guys have all their own stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, cool. You know, the, the other guys have all their own shtick that they bring to the uh, whole um, equation. It works out pretty well. We have a good time. Yeah, bloody oath awesome. it does. And that first album, that Magnus Sony, bloody, that hit pretty yeah. well too. It got some bloody good feedback I, as well. So. I had that on today, man. That's, yeah. that's brilliant. Yeah, it's a killer. Thank you guys so much. We worked really out. hard on it. Yeah. No doubt. Well, the, no you doubt. know, that's, there's another thing I should add is like when we went, got ready to make that record, of course, I had just left another band. So I had something to prove, right? Like I sure. wanted to. Yeah. Like, I want to be like, yeah, like, I can make a really good record without you guys. Like, not that I was mad at them, but it was, like, the only band I'd been in for, like, nine years, right? Sure. So, yeah, oh, there there's, our, there's the cover. So that That's was designed. so rad. It is. Uh, yeah, that album cover. Thank you. That album cover was designed by our bass player at the time, Adam Scott, who's a brilliant designer and a brilliant bass player and a, an nice. incredible guy. We miss him all the time because he was a great bandmate. But, yeah. um. One of the things that when we were making the record, when we st went to make the record, we had the songs ready and we went to make the record. And I was like, all right, guys, listen, I'm a team player. We could make this record with a producer. Um, Like, I'm not going to drop names, but there was one guy no. that was. No, I, I don't drop names just because it's tacky. Um, But um, there was one guy who's like very respected and renowned in the stoner rock genre. And they were like, yeah, we can make the record with him. Like he has a studio. We could go down there and make it. He'll produce it and we'll get that kind of record. Or we can work with my buddy who was like a New York indie rock guy who is in a lot of like very weird and experimental bands. But he's he was he was the real deal. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, it's up to you. We can make it here in Philly. Or we can make it someplace else. We can right. use that guy. We can use my guy, whoever. Like, let's work on it. And the other guys were like, yeah, let's work with your buddy. So yeah, my yeah. buddy comes down and his whole set of influences is all shit that I've never even heard of. Like, oh, cool. Um, like on the outside of things, like I know Wire, you know what I mean? I know what Bauhaus and yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Just there's a Mercy and Joy Division. I'm aware of them, but that wasn't my shit, you know? Whereas right, this guy, right. like, he's like, oh, do you know this? And I'm like, I never fucking heard of that weird Swedish pop band. No, you know? Um, but he brought, First of all, he has he had perfect pitch, perfect mm. time, and a perfect ear, and he could work on the spot. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he can play a bazillion instruments. So um, we get in there, and he's like, he just knew how to run the sessions. You know what I mean? I was yeah. watching him like a hawk the whole time. Right, like, right. Oh, this is how you do it, you know? And right. um, uh, sadly, he passed away. Um, oh, and uh, I, I missed that guy quite a bit, but um. Uh, we and part of the a big part of the why that first record sounds like that was his influence being there and like definitely like freeing us yeah. to do. Um, sorry, my dog's making us. Um, no, freeing us to just do whatever. Uh, like you know, I'm like, oh, I like, but you know, by the end of it, I'm like, oh, I do hear a piano part there, and he's like, uh, okay, what is it and where is it? You know, like where does it happen and what does it sound like? And like, I'm not a piano player, but I picked up a guitar and played the chord. Like, but I'd like to hear this thing that, you know, right. I'm like, I want to hear, I want to hear this chord. I want to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hear and then he found the chord, he put it in there and I'm like, that's awesome. It just like sneaks out of the background. It's like, hi, yeah. like, you know, and then like, you know, and like things like that. And like, he's the one who got me to be like, not afraid of synthesizers. I, I was a rocker. I was a hardcore guy. Right. Yeah. I was like a rocker and a metal guy. Fucking synthesizers are fucking bullshit, right? Like for most rock bands, it's like synthesizers is a gadget. It's a guy with a skinny tie and glasses on. No, you know what I mean? Like, you know, but of course, that, <laughs> but that doesn't like you know Sorry. what that doesn't allow for. That doesn't allow for guys like uh, John Lord. Yeah, from Bla that's Deep, one, that's Deep one Purple, of my biggest is. influences. Deep Purple. It's John yeah. Lord. Yeah. Yeah, he's awesome, and yeah. um, 
P.S. If you want to see something really funny, yeah. Um, the original version of Here I Go Again, you know, by White yeah. Snake. Yeah. 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 Well, John Lord used to be in White Snake. Correct. And there's an original version. There's an earlier version of Here I Go Again. That yeah. Is, it's not as polished as the. It's a, uh, yeah. It's a little more raw. As the one right? that came out in. It's, it's much more of a rocker. And. Yeah. Added bonus, John Lord is playing on it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And oh, that's the really extra cool. bonus of that is it's John Lord in his most coked out glory. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like he's, yeah. he's wearing like white frame sunglasses in the video and a white sport yes. jacket. And he's got like a big mustache. And it's like you can almost like, it's like you just want to brush his mustache <laughs> out so you can get the cocaine crumbles out of it. You know? It's like, oh, did I miss the spot? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what it looks like. And, the, and you could tell he's just out of it. You could tell he's just fucking zooted in the video. But, um, <laughs> Yeah. So I mean and that oh, video is worth awesome. the video is worth its weight in gold when it gets the one shot of him playing his Moog synthesizer and you could tell he does not know where he is, but he has his sunglasses on. Oh he's yeah. fucking wrecked. And like, the the realize realize what Bandy was in for a while. He's like, fuck man, I'm not even in the right Am I in deep purple? Moment. Where am I? Who am Who I? The yeah. fuck am I? Right. <laughs> and also this oh, is interesting. Man. They changed the lyrics, you know, in the um in the chorus where he goes, Like a drifter, I was born to walk alone. Yeah, I was reading about this. In the like original, that. in the original, he says, "Like a hobo, I was born to walk alone," and they rewrote that lyric for a reason that makes a lot of sense as an American. Hobo sounds a lot like homo, yeah. <laughs> right? And so they didn't want any confusion because you know, America. It was for the American audience, and Americans yeah, are right. dumb. If you say, "I'm like a homo, I was born to walk alone." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, why are you talking about you're a homo? Like, because you know Americans were very fucking homophobic. Yeah, yeah for a long time. Yeah, we, we were the same here yeah. in Australia. Don't you worry, mate. Oh yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not worried about it. I'm just saying, like that. Yeah. That was like a big. <laughs> anyway, time, I'm off yeah. on a tangent. I'm sorry. No, you you're have good. Questions, and I'm just fucking running. No, because I'm happy, dude. Our whole show's based on tangents. You're at home here. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So when do I start? Yeah. We, we when do I start? Right? We're all about the conversation, mate. I'm, as a, as right. um, what I do here, I'm not don't like scripted interview dot point questions. <laughs> okay. So conversations well, are always well, fun to me. It's kind of where we we go and explore as well. And I do want to ask about that Yardbirds cover, man. That was cool as fuck. Oh, happening ten years absolutely. ago, man. Yeah, that's an obscure one, huh? Yeah, 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 dude. Mm. It's cool. Um, it's kind of like first cover you kind of done and released, yeah? Um, Let's see. That was... No, we, you know what? We did that right before the second EP came out. Right before Hand of Man. Hand of Man come out. Yeah. Hand of Man, yeah. Right before that's that before. came out, we were like... So it's funny. We were actually driving up to New York to do sessions. Uh, Adam and I, our old bass player, were driving up mm. to Brooklyn. Um to record some keys and record various other things uh, at a studio up there that was run by a friend of ours. Um, and we're driving up there and we're listening to the radio and Happenings 10 years time ago comes on. <laughs> and yeah, Adam designed that cover. There you too. go. That's cool. Um, it, is, uh... it is cool. He did a really good job. Alan's yeah. uh, Adam's talented. So we're driving up there and we're listening to, you know, whatever it was, whatever station. And like, you know, you know, nee, 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 nee. And where I was like, oh, what's yeah. this? And we're listening to it. And we hear the guy said, that was happenings 10 years time ago here on blah, blah. And I'm like, that is a fucking cool song. And yeah. um, and I, I said to Adam, I was like, we should cover this. Like, this is a good song to cover. It's obscure. People don't know it, but it rocks like all hell. Um, right. And it's kind of got that psychedelic vibe that appeals to us. You know, it's got Jeff Beck, like laughing like an asshole in the middle of the break. And. It's got the, oh, yeah. uh, the weird uh, European ambulance, din, 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 you know, thing going on. Right. The guitar solo. Um, so we figured it out and we recorded it ourselves in our room, in our rehearsal space. Like that's a home oh, recording. Cool. Yeah. Oh, but wow. we, that's why we decided to, it's like we were driving and we we're like, I was like, this song's fucking awesome. Like, how do I like, I, because I any mean, it's a deep cut. People don't really know it, you know? Right. Um, right. So we had a lot of fun recording that one. Um, it was fun to record. It's a great song. We don't really play it now, but it was fun to play. Uh, like you know, you got to watch how many covers you do. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Which is oh yeah. You know, 
which is and and you have to watch what they are right and so like in this genre everyone's if you're going to do a cover everyone expects you to do oh you're going to do hand of doom or you're going to do sabra cadabra are you going to do right. uh snow blind and everybody does that shit right everyone everybody does. does right right and i'm like hence like look at what our um so i'm i'm guessing you're cog- you're aware of our our more recent cover yeah right? we'll, we'll jump into them dude the, the, yeah whenever you're ready um yeah, yeah. but yeah like that was our thing is like we wanted to make sure if we do a cover it has to be something interesting yes and make and make it yours yeah, as much yours as you can without like or, losing right it. without yeah yeah you know and that, sure. that's the that's the hard thing like speaking of covers did you ever hear the um the kiss tribute record um i forget what it's called it's a it's like everyone did a cover like some uh i want to say it was uh one of the country artists did hard luck woman uh oh yeah I the think boss I tones that. The mighty mighty boss tones. Yeah, they did. Um, they did Detroit Rock City. Yeah, and uh, and then this weird super group, which was like guys from Rage Against the Machine and Tool, did Doctor Love. Oh yeah, and it's really weird. It's, it's weird. Like, it yeah, sound like do Dr. Love. it doesn't sound like Doctor Love at all. It sounds like I don't know what the fuck it sounds like. It's very right. cool, but it's very far from the original. Different, and right. I wasn't willing right. to go that far from the original. I still wanted people to be like, oh yeah, cool. It's whatever you know um so consequently yeah like when we do when we try to put our own flavor in it but um uh you know stay give give it i mean you don't you know i could be like yeah i'm doing a black sabbath cover and just start singing you know what you get and what you see there you go it's a black sabbath cover but and like no one wants to buy that because it's just an asshole singing right (laughs) um so you have to put something else with it right Right. So make it um, unique. So that yeah, that so that um it when we do we don't do a lot of covers, but when we do, we try to put our little stamp on it. That's the way to know? do it. That's yes, cool. sir. That's the way to do it. Definitely. And that next Thank DP, you. as you mentioned, the hand of man um come out not yeah. long uh, pretty close to that cover as yeah. well. And um all those couple of releases, sorry, pardon me, those first couple of releases did come out through Salt of the Earth Records, a CD for them, physical. Correct. Yeah, and that's a pretty cool label, man. I've uh, caught a, chatted to a few bands on that record as label as well. They do pretty good things there. Mm, um, for sure. I would be remiss if I remiss if I didn't mention. So, Salt of the Earth Records is run by a friend um, who's been in my corner since I was in my old band when I was in Wizard Eye. Awesome. He was supporting us, and that's um, cool. Scott Harrington is his name. And uh, actually, he's hopefully getting out of the hospital very shortly. He. Uh, had his appendix burst on Wednesday, Ooh, this past Wednesday. God. So he, yeah. So I'm like texting his wife. Like, right. Okay. Like, you know, don't, you know, he better, like I told him he seems fine now and they're going to let him leave soon. He's, he had to have emergency surgery. I told Absolutely. him like, from now on, we're going to cover you with bubble wrap and you're not allowed to move, you know? Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, Scott, I mean, if Scott gets to see this at some point, maybe he will. I don't know. He's in the hospital right now. Um, mm. He is an angel of a person. Um, he's a very good friend, one of the kindest people I've ever met, puts out our records, doesn't say shit about what's on the cover, doesn't say shit about what's on it. All he does is like, give me more of that awesome music. I love it. He like, we tell each other, we love each other all the time because he's a doll. He's one of my favorite people. When we go up through Connecticut to the, to new England, he's like, you're going to stay at my house and I'm not going to hear anything else. Oh, that's cool. uh, yeah. yeah, and he we you know, and he has this cute little he has this beautiful like little in law sleep suite that we sleep in when we're there. And you know, he and his wife and his kids and his dogs, they're all wonderful and we uh we adore them. So um but yeah, Salt of the Earth Records, uh Scott puts out oh, our stuff and he's got a good roster over there if you're looking yeah. for rock and roll music. Uh, all you the best definitely... from us as well, Scott, if you do watch this, mate. Absolutely, man. I will definitely well, let him know that. Yeah, and yeah. Um, Salt of the Earth Records, people, go check it out. They're one of those record labels that do really good at supporting Very unique. the underground Very unique scene, label. the doom metal scene, um, the stoner metal scene. There's some great fuzz bands over there. They do some great things. I've actually come across quite a good number of bands through there and interviewed a few bands off Salt of the Earth Records, so definitely go check them out, people. Let's chat about the latest two covers, man. As we were mentioning, you do like to put your spin on it, man. Yes. Crazy Horses, the Osmonds, man. I actually, that 
fucking rocked, man. <laughs> it did. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. That Crazy Horses. So I was aware of that song many years ago. I was aware of it. But I just kind of, if you've ever seen the YouTube videos for it where they're performing it and they're all wearing like the matching jumpsuits and they look really <laughs> goofy. And, it's oh, kind of great. There it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Now, see, now Mike Stewart, our, our drummer, he designed that cover for it. Um, I love that. That's a completely original drawing that he did for us, which I happen to fucking love. I love it, too. Um, it's cool as fuck. Do, do you remember really uh, what was it, Rat Fink and the Rat Rods? That looked like that's that exactly kind of what I told that. You know what? That's what I told him. I was like, can we do a rat think kind of car? But it's yeah, yeah. You know, driven by a fucking insane horse. <laughs> and um, so anyway, I was aware of that song, Crazy Horses, from like a lot a long time. But I just always thought it was funny because the dance moves in the video are fucking hilarious. They're just I mean, if you if if you look it up, there's a performance of them doing it. And like the dancing is just. Fucking stupid. But listen to the song, like cover your eyes and listen to the song. It rips. It fucking rips and it rips hard. And yeah. if you think that's an easy song to play, you're a fucking idiot. There's a lot of little details right. in there. The horns right. are insane. There's a lot of little timing things in there. Um, and then, of course, we had to do our fucking... Yeah, there you go. There's some cool <laughs> dancing, man. Freaking Osmonds. What do you mean? That's how I dance when I go out, dude. That's I love I'm it. I, I do too, man. I do too, brother. Oh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I think. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's some great moves in that video. But so oh, then man. I was like, so then I like I brought it up and uh, like we were at rehearsal. And I was like, guys, have you heard this song? And I brought I played it off my phone you know, through the PA system. I rehearse them like, who's this? And I'm like, just listen to it. And they're like, this rocks. Who is it? And I'm like, it's the it's the <laughs> and they're like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I tell you no lies, friends. It's, it's the Osmonds. And they're like, that's insane. That's such a good song. So then, um, they're good writers, man. They Good songs are good songs. Performers. Right? That's all yeah. there is to it. No, I mean, are some parts of it kind of silly? Yeah. I mean, like, the lead vocals a little like you could tell he's trying to sound tougher than he is. You know, from Mexico, yeah. he sounds like Nixon or something. You know, it's weird. Yeah, you know. So I mean, <laughs> so it's a, it's a little odd, but you know what? That record came out in 1972. That, yeah. that shit does not owe anyone anything. And when you listen to the rest of the record, if you do some deep dive on that record. There's yeah. a bunch of bangers in that fucking record. No doubt. There's that one. Yeah. There's Hold Her Tight. We almost covered Hold Her Tight, which sounds like oh, a that's kiss. A good song. Yeah. yeah, that rocks. Oh my God. Yeah. And then there's, you know, some of those mm, cutesy cutesy things on there too. But it's a good record. And you have to remember there was no Beatles at the time. And Led Zeppelin was the shit. So like they were yeah, kind of yeah. doing that thing where they were crossing between being the Beatles and trying to be the Beatles, trying to be a boy group, and also right. wanting to and yeah, th that song predates Kiss for sure. It's from 1972, but Holder Tight's a rocker, and it sounds like the immigrant song. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun Has that bass line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's dope. Yeah, that's uh. See, this is sick. We got into a we, we fell into a whole wormhole. We went into a oh, yeah. into a wormhole of of Osmonds, and so like we're all talking about. Oh, that one. That's Merrill. Merrill wrote that one. Merrill Osmond wrote that one. I'm like. Holy shit, I know the names of the different fucking Osmonds. <laughs> what, Holy shit. How rad is that? But people take that for it's granted. fucking rad, right? You know? It's fucking awesome. It, like, you got to do a deep dive. So cool. You know what I mean? Like, so, and our keyboard player, who is a, he's, I love him to death. Jack is an amazing, wonderful guy, but he's awesome. a weirdo. He's an incredible weirdo. And so when he found out, you know the thing in, in Crazy Horse? Like, mm -hmm. He found out what is that there? is and got one. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's insane. Uh, he went out and bought it. It's like this thing. It's like a ribbon, right? It's like a, a stick with like a yeah. membrane at the top of it. And you play it by running your finger across it. Like almost wow. like a ther theremin in a way. I play a theremin. It's not like a theremin. Is it, okay. So it's not air. It's a... It's a... And you literally... It's, and it's touch sensitive. So the harder you push it down, the louder it is. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, so yeah. Different. Okay. So like you put your finger on it and you go roo, 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 and it does that with the oh, theremin dude. I'd have to go ring and pull back yeah 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 I got you I'm so, yeah, I, yeah. I play a theremin on stage yeah 
um, along oh, with guitar. Okay. Cool, yeah, man. I, I play. Yeah, I sing. I play. We, guitar, we got. Play we got to talk, man, because I do electric mandolin, keys. Uh, oh, I have a mandolin steel. right here in the next. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> oh, you know what's We're funny? We're gonna hook up, dude. <laughs> say, um, um, when I was talking to you from just right over here in the next room, I actually have a didgeridoo yeah. sitting next to my oh, chair nice. that I was sitting. Yeah, I just bought one. I learned how to play yes. it because um, it's going on the next record. Fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> also sitting in there is a banjo that I'm learning to play. That's going on the next record. Yo, I question. notice you play a lot of different instruments as well. As you mentioned, the sitar, yeah. you've got the lap steel, the drum machine, <laughs> the big bass. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, so it must be fun That's as a musician. Awesome. We were kind of talking me and Jim before we jumped in about kind of pushing yourself as an artist and as a musician and not kind of typecasting yourself and you mentioned it too is just one like lane or one kind of right. artist so listen i'll tell you what there there's nothing wrong with being really into the thing that you're into and i was like that for years i was like fuck a piano it's fucking furniture i don't want a piano you know what i mean <laughs> i was like fuck a synthesizer it's bullshit it's a gadget you know mm -hmm. um and like i didn't care about having like other instruments and I got older, and I'm like, mandolin's fun, you know. Um, our yes. keyboard player, um, right? Our keyboard player plays um, plays mandolin, but he also um, plays violin like really well. Yeah, and that's gonna be that'll make it on the next record. So, oh. aside from being like, aside from the multi instrumentational thing, it, it's the same amount of work that you put into like seeing what else is out there, right? So I was like, guys, right. guys what do you think? You want to do this uh, Osmond Brothers song? And they were like, yeah, that song fucking rocks. And then, of course, we did our thing with it where it was like, you know, we put the little intro on there. And um, I used a stylophone because we didn't have the ribbon thing yet. I used a stylophone for the horsey noise. Oh, cool. Um, and then, like, if you listen at the end of the song where, like, we bring the chorus back and we're like, crazy horses, yeah, yeah. you can hear the other guys are, like, yelling shit in the background. Like, you know, they're just, like, you know, it, 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 it's it's some of it's a little buried in the mix, but you can hear, like, the other guys going, crazy horses, crazy horses. Oh, that's cool. And then you can hear Jack, their keyboard player, is in the background. He's going, <laughs> like, doing a horse, you know. Um, It's in there. It's just hard to hear. Yeah. Um, no, we it's can't killer. understand. I mean, that's part of it. Is like you know, our recording technique is to take everything and record it, and then see what sticks. Like see what like you can live without, right? Yeah. And like there are certain things where I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm not going to be able to live without the stylophone part. Like that's going to have to stay there. Um, <laughs> you know, we tried doing like horns, like simulating horns because we don't know any horn players. I tried sure. simulating the horns with like, you know, guitar parts and it, it wasn't happening. It wasn't, you know what I mean? I was like, all right, well, this is just our version. It doesn't have the horns in it, you know? Um, but yeah, we were, I mean, we play that one. We play that at shows. Um, it's in our set, you know, crazy horses oh, is in cool. our set. Yeah. yeah. It's a good time. And people, the best thing is like when you play that and there every once in a while, some old heads show up and they're like, I have that record. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, you know yeah, what I mean? sure. Like that's always fun. Like when you like, you know, some old head will come over to you and like shake your hand and be like, I never thought I'd hear crazy horses at this show tonight, but right. here I am and here you are. You know? Yeah. And that, that's a good feeling. You know, so we had a good time with it. And that's the first recording we did with our with Josh, our bass player, yeah. the guy that we just got. Um, and we recorded that that's another huge benefit is Josh is a um a recording engineer. He has a lot of recording equipment and he has a recording studio in his basement. So cool. we were able to record all of Crazy Horses at our rehearsal space. And then we went back to Josh's place and recorded the guitars and bass and vocals. So like it cost us nothing but the mastering cost and the mixing cost because we had yeah. somebody else mix it and master it. But like we're talking about like that song cost us a hundred and a hundred dollars to do. Awesome. Oh, um, cool. Joshua not, Sugar not, Bush Solomon. I love the little names over there on the band camp. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Love. So Okay, camp, so not. the thing about <laughs> so the thing about the the reason why Josh is sugar bush and I'm flea biscuit, yeah. Um, and um, Mike is uh, Appaloosa. Mike is uh, yeah, Mitch Appaloosa, Claw and Daddy Jack's Appaloosa, baby face Fontaine. <laughs> yeah. So at one point, I don't. We're you know we're a bunch of idiot guys who hang out in a room together. At one point, 
like the joke was that in the 70s we were a band well, of course we were all infants and some of those guys weren't even born yet but the joke was like oh you know we were a band in the 70s and we were called the pony express and we all had names like horses so like we all had to choose a name and so mike became mitch appaloosa and you know and then um he also drinks white claws you know white claws jai yeah oh yeah i do yeah. i do we have white claws over okay here. yeah i have invited australia i was bartending yeah. for a number of years before there uh, okay so there you go mike drinks white claws in the summer because they're lighter than beer yeah so okay, yeah. that's when we started calling him claw daddy he's the claw daddy <laughs> you know it's like there's no law but the claw, claw. you know um so he became claw daddy appaloosa and then we had to come up with horse names you know so uh josh became sugarbush because that's a kind of horse yep yeah and um and i don't know why jack is babyface fontaine but it sounds like a horse name it does doesn't it and, it, it does sound like a racehorse yeah and um and i'm flea biscuit based on you know sea biscuit <laughs> <Yes, yeah. laughs> and oh. believe it or not i took the logo off my amplifier and bought a new like a handmade logo that says flea biscuit and that's what it says <laughs> on my amp i don't oh, my that's amp awesome. is, my amp isn't named what it initially was named. It's now it is called Flea Biscuit. Flea Anyone biscuit. sees it like, what kind of amp is that? I'm like, it's a Flea Biscuit, man. It's a Flea Biscuit. I haven't heard of it. Yeah, like you never heard. Like you're pretty out of it. You never heard of a fucking Flea Biscuit guitar amp? Can I order that off Reaver? <laughs> After a while, he's yeah, like... sitting there going, yeah, man, I, I think I have heard of that, actually. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, one guy actually did say that. He's like, oh, Flea Biscuit. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, man, you're so full of shit. You're a guy's around. All right. You know? <laughs> but um, yeah, so that that's how we get we came up with the nicknames. And like it's an ongoing, you know, joke. Like right. we keep talking about doing like the behind the music. And like for some reason we'll all have accents because we're older and we'll all be like, you know, we'll all have to be like from different places and we're all like, you know, I'll have my hair up and I'll wear sunglasses the whole time. I'll just be like Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they'll be like, you take uh, Eric, what do you remember? What do you re right? And they'll be like, well, Eric, what do you remember about being in the Pony Express? And I'll be like, I don't remember nothing. <laughs> I'll be Kermit for some reason. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right, yeah. I was Turn like, it to Kurt. Turn off yeah. there for a minute. <laughs> yeah. No, I know it, nothing. Well, what was that Schultz? That was Schultz. It was like, I see nothing. Yes. That's him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Clink was like the oh, <laughs> like he had that like. That's right. Sort of very affected. Oh really? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You don't fuck with me on like old uh, stuff that you watched when you were cutting school. <laughs> it's, I, I, I just, I just got back from a gig over the weekend. I'm sorry, my, my, my I'm, I'm just, just close enough. Or it was like, mm. oh no, no, I gotta correct it. My bad. But I'm, I'm yeah, right I'm looking at your guitars back there. I see a couple of pretty guys back there. A couple uh, of Jim's and boys. Jim plays in a band yeah. called Len. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, from your what area. They, what are you got, called? Uh, Len, L E double N E. Len or Lenny? Yeah, either one. Okay. Um, and um, is there a Squiggy? <laughs> I'm Squiggy. <laughs> um, okay. We're actually hello, girls. Uh, yeah, we're exactly. <laughs> uh, my front man, uh, Lenny Serzosi, is actually from Staten Island, so okay. I'm up there I'll quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, he uh, uh, he uh, um. We, we 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 started recording together in 2017, but we're uh, we're we actually we're we're on Imagine Records, which is a Morgan Rose's label from Seven Dust. Okay. So uh, we write with him, and then we're real tight with um, our buddies, and they live like 20 minutes apart. Is Bob Pantella from Atomic Bitchwax, Monster Magnet, and uh, John DeServio from Black Label Society. So oh, we do. Wow. So you've got like you've got some. Uh... Some pretty good uh, folks in your it's, corner there. It's terrifying recording with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet. Like, what are you going to do to impress a guy who plays with Zach Wild? Right, <laughs> Not right. a fucking thing is the answer. Yeah, yeah. Do no. shit. Well, I refer you to know, him because like, we, 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 you know, he, he always, he, he, you know, I bring my electric mandolins and he's like, oh, bring your tiny guitars, Jim. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, and but he's, he's, he's actually, he was a major influence on Zach bringing back keyboard, uh, mm. having at least one keyboard song per record. And oh. um, he and I, I will sit there when I go to his house. Um, he is, I, I always refer to him as he is my, my Jedi instructor. Um, mm. It's always something different. Like try this on the keys, Jim. I, 
you know, I learned classical from when I was a kid. So right. he's, he does a lot with the, like electric piano and like, he's like, you mm. got to check out, you know, you mentioned Santana and I actually thought of that with you guys. I was like, man, uh, 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 uh what's the song? I always think of the movie Zodiac. It's at the beginning, uh, soul, soul sacrifice. Yeah. Doom. And, doom. And, doom. Doom. Right. That, that, all the, you're right. Yeah. And I thought of that and I was like, you, when you said Santana, I immediately thought of soul sacrifice for an odd reason. And I was we like, talk I, about I, Santana all the time. Yeah. And yeah. Like as we, um, you know what song I, um, uh, I showed to Josh and he's been, he's had a boner for it ever since. Um, there's a song on a uh, Borboletta. Do you know that it's a Santana album? It's an older one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Jai is looking for it right now. I see. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's called Borboletta, and there's a song called Mirage on there. Oh, um, yeah. You know that song? And it's got this sick, the guitar solo starts, and it's like Carlos Santana just kind of comes in and goes. <laughs> yeah. And he, like The first thing he does is hits this note with vibrato, and it goes into feedback in like right. the most perfect, like second order harmonic. And it's like, yeah. and you're like, fuck you, Carlos. Because you know he didn't use anything fancy. It was just Carlos being no. Carlos, right? Right, and exactly. like just crushes. Like the first time I played it for him, like it got to that part, and he just like stopped the he stopped the playback and goes like, "Hold on," and he like brought it back. He's like, "I just want to hear that first note again." And like, oh, it's it's. Oh, and Santana's band is so good. Like, oh yeah. Well, I mean, it was the guys from Journey, right? And then, right. Uh, you know, so it's like all these guys who eventually became Journey were playing with Santana, right. and the, the percussion section is just insane. Um, but That's yeah, Santana's so cool. been a yeah, Santana's been a big one for really? us. Um yeah, yeah, they're they're awesome. And like, man, I know I'm missing a lot of bands that like that we we all dig, but like yeah, Santana was a, right. has been a big one for us. But yeah, Soul Sacrifice. Dun, 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 dun. It has <laughs> exactly oh it has dude. those runs in it and all that. Oh yeah. And it was like um Y'all do this? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what that is, right? That's the boner. <laughs> That's the riff boner. Oh. The riff boner. <laughs> I, 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 like, I, um, I'm with you on finding stuff that's obscure. Like after, after the Temptations, like the, the Motown era, they they had that record. Uh, what was it? Shaky Ground. Mm -hmm. uh, that they on shaky, on shaky ground. ground. Yeah. It was a yeah. nasty. Great song. So and fun. and. It very funky, and then Glass House was on that record mm -hmm. too. And I was talking to Bob and 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 JD about. It. I was like, dude, that's so under underrated. Yeah, you know, oh, that kind of sure. stuff. And it was oh like, yeah, that whole you know, era is uh, is underrated. Um, for sure. That I mean, and there's so much good. I mean, like all the funkadelic stuff. And now, granted, they put out a lot of shit because you know they put out a lot of shit. Right. But, um. Like the first Funkadelic album, Mommy, What's a Funkadelic? Um, Parliament's, <laughs> been, Parliament's been a big thing for me for years. Um, nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've just, I've been a, a huge fan um, of all that stuff. I've seen George Clinton a couple times. Um, I, I saw Santana twice back in the day. Um, wow. Yeah. I saw Santana actually, my graduation present when I graduated from high school. Uh, my parents were like, What do you want to do? You want to go on a trip? I'm like, No, I want to see Santana. And they were like, okay. And wow. um, I saw Carlos Santana with my best friend at the time at the Academy of Music in Philly. In Philly, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was in a balcony seat. Like, here's this, here's me, here's the stage. So, like, there's Carlos and here's me nice. right here. Wow. And it was Carlos Santana's band with Wayne Shorter, the jazz saxophonist. Oh, right, yeah. And they just melded the whole thing together. They did the the Wayne Shorter stuff and the Santana stuff together. Mm. It was it was effervescent. It was ethereal. It was it like a, a just cool. incredible. Experience. Yeah, like Carlos was just on fire, and people like had their babies with them. You know what I mean? Because yeah, right. So at one point, like he's playing a solo, and this woman is standing in the front of the stage. I it's in my brain like a tattoo, right? She holds up her baby in front of the stage, like Lion King, you know? <laughs> right. so she holds the baby up in front of the stage, 
And in the middle of his solo, and the baby's crying, in the middle of a solo, he brings down the volume and starts playing, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, my baby. In the middle yeah. of the solo. Oh. And it's like, like that. I'll never forget that. Like, How wild is that? And also, That's like, crazy. just to speak to the genius of Carlos Santana, to be able to break out of what he was doing. Like me, right. if someone like did something like that, I'd just be like, okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a human, yeah. not a fucking alien like Carlos, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and if they expected me to do something besides doing what I was re- already doing, I would just like shit myself. Like, I, I can't <laughs> occupy... You know what I mean? Like, I can't move yeah. that many different things. Like, you know, I mean, like, again, cran- I created a, uh, a position for myself that's uh, it, difficult, it just, right? It just wouldn't happen now, would it? Like, the different generation, right. too. Like, you they see someone bringing a baby to a fucking rock show now. You're like, what the fuck are you doing? This is back then. Right. Can you imagine like, someone brings their baby to Slipknot or some yeah. shit like that? <laughs> I don't know. Dan and I were just talking about, I just watched um, Lamb of God at um, in Portland, Oregon, and this mm-hmm. kid, he goes, Randy stops the show at one point and he goes, how old are you, bro? And the kid goes, 11. That's and he nice. had this artwork, but, and I was like, you brought an 11 year old to a Lamb of God show? <laughs> but I mean, to be fair, I mean, and you know this, you guys both know this. Oh, yeah. And I know it very well. Metalheads are the nicest people. They are. The, bar none. They are the nicest people. Bar if none. you saw. I took my sister to sleep not for her first concert. I think she was like 13, dude. She was only little too. Wow. Yeah. Right. And and nobody fucked with her, did they? No. No. Of of course not. And nobody hit her in the pit. And if it got crazy, someone was probably like, it's okay, honey. You stay back here. That's it. Because that's That's exactly it. That's it. You know know why? Absolutely. People are scared of us. We look weird. I mean, look. Look. You can't see it. I have 10 foot dreadlocks, man. Uh. I have this huge beard. I wear all black, you know? Yeah. Um, I walk around and a lot of people are like, mm, I don't know, you know? Meanwhile, I'd nah. fucking do anything for anybody. You Absolutely, know? sir. And Absolutely. We're the same. Absolutely. And the, We're the same yeah, way. Yeah. And, the, and the scarier the metalhead, the nicer they are. The softer the, the more terrifying. Bar, bar, bar none. Like the more, bar, bar none. The, the more piercings and tattoos, the scarier the fucking disembodied disemboweled fucking dead pig on their shirt yeah. like the yeah. closer that it, it, it is the more that guy's like oh i'm sorry can i help you with that i, I can help. yeah i can attest Metal to that too ch- eric like i've right? um, recently just been diagnosed with cancer so i've started i'm going through chemotherapy at the moment and a whole lot of cancer treatment and that and the whole community's been unreal i've got a whole lot of metal head friends from all over and the words of encouragement and Exactly. The kindness exactly. that has been shown to me in this time has been absolutely unreal. And it's made absolutely. me so proud to be a part of this community. Every single yeah. day, I will spout that. We just, there's yes. just full love and Metalheads are the nicest people. It's just. It's far on. Eric, it's, you're it's absolutely right. And can I tell you something? And it sounds a little negative, but fuck it. Um, I've hung with like indie rock people and like, mm-hmm. you know, like emo people and stuff like that. You want to see someone get in a fight? Put two emo guys in a fucking same bar. Yeah. And then say, mm-hmm. and just, and like, and start an argument about at the drive in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 They'll be throwing beer bottles at each other, fucking hitting each other. Those indie yeah. rock dudes not only are, all right, I'll, I'll take it a step further. Metal guys are the best guys to interview. Oh, yeah. You know why? <clears throat> Because people don't fucking like us. Yeah, I know. So whenever someone shows it, when, whenever it's someone true. shows any interest in us, we're like, "Yes, what can I do for you?" Like, you know, like, yeah. do, you, do you want my dinner? I'll give you my dinner. Um, yeah. Like years ago, I worked in the music press, right? I worked yeah. for a music magazine, and um, I was like, "Well, we have to." Guar was on tour. Oh and, yeah. Um, and I was like, "Well, we have to put Guar on the cover." Like, it's a no-brainer. And my boss was like, okay, yeah, you set it up. So we had them come by. We had a photographer who was the guy that was doing our, you know, did our cover pictures and stuff like that. And so we didn't even get like the main guys. We didn't get Dave Brocky. We got like, you know, secondary players because it was, they didn't know it was for a cover. So we got like some chick, uh, what was her name? Sly Menstra Hyman. Like, you know. Hyman, <laughs> yeah, I know exactly the one you mean. Yeah. So she shows up That's and she's funny. like a regular, and she's like, shows up and she's just like a regular girl. She's small and she's petite yeah. and like real skinny and everything. She's like, I just got to get changed. She gets changed and she's in like these, you know, one foot high platform <laughs> boots that have skulls yeah. on the bottom of them. And she's got like skulls over her boobs and she's got all the makeup on and everything. 
and like and then there was another guy i forget what the other guy's name was um i don't it wasn't odorous i don't remember who he was but anyway like the two of them are there like doing the posing for the photos and the photographer is like okay do you guys want to try something else and she's like i can jump if you want to get pictures of my boots and he's like yeah that's great so she that's starts cool. jumping around the fucking room so we can get pictures yeah. of her feet in the air okay that's so cool and, like, and he and she jumped around for like a half hour so we could get the shot okay that's amazing then he's like then he goes all right well i guess that's it and she's like i can breathe fire oh and he goes you can that's do so funny now. and she goes like yeah i can breathe fire he's like can i do it in here in the studio and she's like and he was like yeah absolutely so talk about putting out for a photo session she breathed yeah. fire for the photo session okay now by comparison take john spencer blues explosion Oh yeah. We interviewed right. John Spencer Blues Explosion. They wanted to know what the budget was for a wardrobe. I'm like, motherfucker, we don't have money to dress you. He wanted a Calvin Klein suit for the um for the photo shoot. No. I'm like, motherfucker, yeah. we don't have money like that. You know, you yeah, want right. a Calvin Klein right. suit, you better fucking buy one yourself, buddy. You know? Yeah. Um oh, and uh let's see, try and get like Yola Tango. To like jump around for a half hour. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> try to try to get uh fucking guided by voices to do something besides sit on their ass. Yeah. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> like, and it's not because they're bad, it's just they don't put out the same way as metal no. people yep. do. Because we're just so happy that anyone gives a shit. Yeah. Yeah. We're like, and as soon as you interview an, a metal guy, they're like, hey, listen, next time in town. Um, I'll send you, I'll make sure that there's tickets at the window for you. Like, you know, you just let me know, yeah. you, like, you know, here's my, here's my cell. Just text me if you're that's, coming to town. That's like, how, and that's how Bob, like that. exactly, dude. And that's how Bob and JD were. We, we roadied for, so we recorded with Bob and he was like, man, I hate to cut you guys off recording. I got a show in Brooklyn. Hey, why don't you guys come out? Because we're right. off tour. We're off tour. And uh -huh. we they were they're they're on TP Records and right. um it was this secret show in Brooklyn. So me and Lenny yeah. show up and and we go there and uh I was like, can we? I was like, it, so it was yeah, it was Cause it was Cause uh, Garrett and Bob and uh mm. I, we were like, guys, can we help you? And they're like, are you serious? So we wrote it for. Them. And then yeah. I was like, Chris, what are you drinking, man? And he goes, uh, he was like, do you, do you like gin and tonics? I was like, I love gin and tonics. I'll get us two yeah. of them. And we sat and just hung out. And we were talking yeah. about, it wasn't even about music. Because he yeah, comes out. Just bullshitting around. Just bullshitting. He comes out, he buys, um, he comes out to Carlisle here all the time. Uh -huh. There's Jay, there's a big car show out in Carlisle. And it's like Mustangs, any of that. He buys cars. I was like. Hey, you know I live near Carly's. Get out, dude. That's so, you know. And it was just hanging dude, out you know and, and it was awesome. Jim, I just it just occurred to me. Um yeah. so later in June, we're playing the Maryland Doom Fest, right? Yeah. And sure. on our way out to the Doom Fest, we're gonna be playing in a couple of towns out towards Western PA, close closer to Pittsburgh. Yeah. So um if you're gonna be free, I'll let me know. Um yes, sir. we're playing the twenty third and the 24th we're playing in like was it Irwin is the name of the one town oh, and yeah I don't know with I don't know uh That's we had a booking here, agent. I think yeah. okay we had a booking agent hook it up but um I mean I, I'll tell you what um when we get done with this um, I'll get you on Facebook dude yeah 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 hit me on Facebook and I'll I'll let me know if uh if you're going to be available I'll get you you know we'll we'll get you, uh, you know um that's sorry brilliant, I can't, man. can't offer you the same thing man <laughs> no 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 that's all good brother that's all we, good, man. we gotta fly him in that's it <laughs> yeah right <laughs> i'll be over there once i kick cancer's ass bro that's i've yes, got a lot of will. things on my bucket list exactly my friend that's my plan that's for sure um i Absolutely. do want to chat about the latest release man the oh, yeah. white cover babe. Babe. babe i'm gonna love you babe. just a little more babe just a little more just a little Just more. A little more. I, I love the I love the walrus. That is so cool. He is fucking. And you know, awesome. and you see that's us, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. Correct. Dude. That is. Well, such have a you cool seen the cover. real album cover? Um, let me get uh, into that. I will. Yeah, you gotta have to see it because then you'll see why that cover makes sense. I'll bring that up for you. Um, 
yeah, let's start chatting about Great. it, man. I'll bring it up for us. Cool. Yeah, um, and you'll see why that cover had to be exactly the way it is. Um, <laughs> and we didn't really, ha- it's almost like we didn't have a choice. <laughs> um, we we kind of had to. Um, and uh, all praises to oh, Jack. Yeah, or- yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, you'll see. fuck yeah, man. I'll, I'll all, share this all praises you. to Jack. That was his idea to make Barry into a walrus. <sighs> um, and the reason why is because people call them the love walrus. There, there you go. go. It's a little. That's oh my god. god. Admittedly, but yeah, that's cool. That I see it. I totally fucking see it now, dude. Oh wow. That's crazy. Wow. So cool. originally, what we were gonna do was have the the Barry White character be me and holding my hands like this, and the other guys would be in my hands. Yep. Right. I'm like, I'm like that ain't right. No. It needs to be Barry holding us, yeah. but instead. Yeah. A walrus, because he's the love walrus. Yeah. Yeah. And then we tried to recreate the poses of the girls on the cover too. Like if you notice, um, uh, Jack is over there on the end, yeah. and he's yeah. nailing that girl's pose. He's mm-hmm. nailing it. He's. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Josh is definitely giving me the hairy eyeball, like the one chick in the picture. You'll see. Yeah. So yeah. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. Josh yeah. is giving me the hairy eyeball. Right here. Yeah. I mean, like I said, Do we have the this- best. Oh, is this on a shirt yet? <laughs> you know what? You're not the first person who's asked me that. It really ought to be. <laughs> it really. We've we've had a couple people say like, if that's not a sticker or a shirt, you guys are nuts. Yeah. And I'm like, oh yeah, you have yeah. a point. You have a point. Um, so the story behind us covering that was, um, if you've heard the original, that opening riff. Yeah. Dun, right. dun, 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 dun. That's a doom riff. I don't give a fuck who you are. That's a doom riff. Right, right. Um, except it's played on a harpsichord and a piano on the original, right? And I was oh, like, cool. so I brought it to rehearsal. I played it for the guys. I was like, listen to this. And of course, Mike heard that groove, that it, yeah. it's such a sweet groove. Mike was like obsessed with that groove. And I'm like, do we want to cover this? And we're like, Yep, let's do it. And I'm like, okay, so now I have to try and figure out how to fucking sing a Barry White song. Okay, <laughs> no pressure. Like only one of the best vocalists in in ever, you ever. know. And also, yeah. everyone's a heard super of Barry White. baritone. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. Who doesn't want to have a voice like that? You know, who doesn't oh, want to no. be like have that oh, low, no. beautiful baritone? In case you guys haven't noticed, I don't have a baritone. I'm not even fucking close. Nah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, on the, I mean, I, and, and like the, the other guys were, I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to pull this off. And they were like, you know what? You're going to do it how you do it. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and they gave me like blessings to my, my bandmates. They gave me free reign to do my, to do, to do my best. And I think I did, I did well. I don't sound like Barry, but I did me, which is yeah. the only thing I can do, you know? And I tried to get away from the idea of trying to sound like, the original, just like on the Osmonds cover, I did my best not to sound like like um, like, like the Osmonds, you know. Right. Um, and then we did our thing with it, you know, because it's a long funk song and a lot of it's just a groove, right? And you know, we don't have a string section, you know, <laughs> so um, we added some Mellotron to do some stringy things, and uh, you know, we we did our thing with it. I think the most noticeable our thing about it is that uh. It has that sitar hook on it. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you something that isn't a secret or shouldn't be a secret to anybody who's heard it of a certain age. That hook was also in, uh, it's also in Biggie Smalls, a couple of his songs that, it's also in Centipede by Reby Jackson. And the original of it is, of course, The Jungle. Um. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. The message by uh, Grandmaster F- Flash and the Furious Five, where he's like, oh. dee, 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 yeah. Dee, 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 dee. yeah, that's that's Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder I how the hell we keep going, going under. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, yeah. So, um, I just had it in my head, and I started playing it on the sitar, and I'm like, that's got to be a hook in this, right? Mm. And Josh was like, yeah. And then we ended up just like slapping it in different places around the song. So that was kind of us doing our thing with it, like making it our own, because that's not in the original. And I didn't right. really care that it wasn't in the original. Um, 
and then I um I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> I can't. And so of course I'm being interviewed about it. Um, uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but at the end of the song, um, you hear Barry White himself start to talk. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear it. It's it's in the song. Um, after the last chorus, you hear Barry White. Now there's these outtakes. Um, excuse me. Barry White was cutting a promo when he was on tour, and he was at a town mm. in Texas, at a town called Paul, in a at a college called Paul Quinn College, and he was cutting okay. a rain radio promo for his performance and like whatever the fuck else was going on at Paul Quinn College. Yeah, the outtakes on it are fucking hilarious because whoever wrote the wrote the script for him to read wrote it really badly and so Barry doesn't know what the fuck it says. I don't know if Barry was fucking zooted or high or something, but he's real frustrated and he keeps trying to read it and he keeps fucking up. And so like you can hear him doing that in the background. You can find it on YouTube if you find look up Barry White outtakes, you'll yes. find it. It's hilarious cuz like it's like Barry like, "Hi, I'm Barry White. Paul Quinn College welcomes you to fuck <laughs> take two, take two, take two. Yeah, and then I'll, I mean, here is Hi, I'm Barry White. Paul Quinn College invites you. Shit, it cordially invites you. I asked to come on. Fuck. And then you hear someone oh, in the shit. background say, and then you hear somebody in the background going, like, say something. He's like, I'm cutting a promo, Tony. Like, um, <laughs> so he's super fucking mad in the background. And that's, you can hear it like kind of low in the background. Mm. At the end of the song, you hear Barry White like shit, like you know, that's and like is. flipping out and being mad, and it's really funny. And that's so awesome. that's in, yeah, that's in there, and um, and then like um, oh Jim, you'll appreciate this. You know what a bass six yeah. is? Right. Yeah, there's, I'm saying again. Yep, it's a Fender bass six. Oh yeah, you know that go ahead. Yes, sir. yeah. So Josh has a bass six that's at his place, and so it's tuned just like a guitar, but it's a whole octave down. Yeah, 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 for sure. So um, that's cool. That thing was laying, is, is at his house. And so at the end of the song, I was like, oh, you know, it'd be funny if I did something like this. And he just tracked me doing it. I play like a guitar solo on this bass six. And you can hear it oh, in the yeah. background. It's, it's bizarre sounding. And then there's like there's like pedal. There's lap steel in there. And uh, oh, that's cool. Drones. Yeah, we um, oh, um, I love doing stuff like that. There's drones in there. There's um, uh kalimba do you know what that is the thumb piano oh yeah the thumb piano yeah. yeah oh yeah yeah there's some kalimba in there um no stylophone on that one but there's definitely drones wow. um, there's an acoustic guitar in there there's mellotron there's um and you know, like you were saying about keys right like yes, one of my favorite things that jack plays is he plays uh something that sounds like a fender Rhodes. yeah like the very tinkly Rhodes sounding thing yeah, or, yeah. or like a Wurlitzer. And then, um, right. and then he also has a patch on there that sounds like a Farfisa, one of those old keyboards. Oh, so yeah. like, and he also has a, um, what do you call it? Uh, shit. A clavinet sound. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, you can't do a lot of old funk stuff without some clavinet. Oh, I was going like, to say like yeah. Stevie Wonder type stuff and all that, you know, like, right. or... um, even Led Zeppelin, you can't do trampled underfoot without burp, 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 Yeah, yeah. Da -da 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 you know, so like, oh, yeah, yeah. we have some of you know, those things in there. Yeah, yeah. It's, this stuff is awesome. Like, so um, yeah, we chose that song because it's a fucking awesome song. It has that riff in it. Yeah. And it's probably the last thing anybody would have expected us to do, yeah. which kind of tickles my asshole a little bit. Like the idea of like doing something that like, they really just cover a Barry White song? Like, what? You know? That's cool. Yeah. We actually That's played it one cool. time. We played it out in front at a show one time. We had played our whole set, and everyone was like, yeah, do another, do another, do another. And we're like, I just looked at the guys. I'm like, y'all want to hear a love song? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's the cool. part that was a fucking trip. <sighs> we started playing it, right? Right? And mm. we start playing. The beat starts. And this kid is like maybe 20 years old. He's like, Am I hearing a Barry White song right oh, now? Wow. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, all right, first of all, you look like Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Second of all, how the fuck do you know this song? Hey, kudos. Parents probably but, had a killer collection. <laughs> I would hope, right? Yeah. But, um, but like, so we played that and he lost his fucking mind. He's like, I can't believe you guys did a Barry White song that blew my mind. And I'm like, 
crazy the shit that blows people minds you know uh, yeah, but um for sure you know I, I we don't play it live a lot because it's it's long and uh has a lot of layers to it it is like you know sure we could probably do like a stripped down more rocking version but that kind of isn't fair to the song i don't think sure you know you know like i don't know maybe we'll bring it back another time but you know so you would have to twist my arm pretty hard to play that song again uh <laughs> i it's great and you know what what's great about it there's so many um in the original there's so many amazing elements involved in that song that like you don't notice until you start pulling it apart like the bass sure. is doing one thing and the bass is um the bassist is Nathan East, by the way, who you would know from playing with Stevie Wonder and a bunch of other people. Um, but like some parts of it are like, excuse me while I just Yeah. Right? That's what's happening mm -hmm. on strings and guitar. And then there's another guitar. Right. And, and like hit, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like we like we started like when you start digging into that song, it's like Man, that's some arrangement. Way to go, Barry. Yeah. Like, you know, like you it's know, very layered. It's very layered. And I think it's really important, like again, like I was saying, to like um to advance and do something more and 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 get bigger than what you are. Mm -hmm. You have to try things, you have to experiment. Some of them aren't gonna work, right? Some things are gonna right, like be right. Shit. And some things are going to be like some things are going to be like this doesn't leave this room, you know. Like no yeah, one gets right. to know that I fucking did that because I'm doing it in a safe space with my brethren because uh, <laughs> I wanted to see what happened. And like, thank God nobody else heard that because that was terrible. I feel oh, like a line. Jim, do you sing at all? Uh, yeah, I try. <laughs> yeah, same. So what back before i mean i come from hardcore and like and all that stuff so i yes, used sir. to sing for entire sets but i wasn't the singer i was the guitar player who sang backup yeah yeah and when you do hardcore it's all like yo i'm not <laughs> like that right yeah yeah, and yeah, yeah yeah doing that doing that i learned how to like raise my voice and shout without hurting myself right oh yeah yeah for sure but in my last band i did a lot of um a lot more like you know uh you know like fried type vocal like it was yeah, a lot yeah, more yeah. <laughs> type stuff right yeah 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 and that's great for some things but like i wanted to push myself sure so i started practicing vocals and i like listen if you want to practice vocals look up vocal warm ups on youtube yeah and there's nothing that's going to teach you to sound like leslie west ps another big influence um we used to cover a mountain song. We used to cover Never in My Life. Thank you very much. We didn't record that, but we used to cover oh, Never in My Life by Mountain. Great song, right? That was that was one Bob wanted to cover for a show once. Yeah. Great song. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very melodic. <laughs> Super riff. And it's got the cowbell Beautiful. in it. Fuck you, man. Yeah. yeah the same right. record as Mississippi Queen. Um, Correct. But like arguably the more fun song to play. Um, right. But anyway, yeah. I started practicing like sing singing, especially after, when before we made the first record. I didn't sure. want to make another <clears throat> record. I wanted to make a. Right. First of all, again, there's nothing wrong with, you know, that vocal style, but I felt like it was doing that was like keeping me from reaching my potential, and sure. also, I'm fucking over here writing lyrics, right? Yeah. Who the hell understands what the hell I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> if I'm just screaming in your face, I mean, some people really like it and it's fun to do, but like what you end up with is a thing that, in my opinion, sometimes pushes people away because yeah, they don't true. understand what's going on. Oh, yeah. And, right. and listen, if people can't wrap their arms around some part of your music, no one's going to like it. You mm -hmm. know? Right. And right. every human being almost every human being on this planet has a voice. Not all of us can right. sing, but we all have a voice. And so when you do a vocal, people relate to that because they all like, ooh, I wonder how he does that. The only thing right, I ever used to right. hear from people when I used to sing with the vocal fry was like, doesn't that hurt you? That was like, that was what I heard the most often, like, doesn't that hurt you? 
And right. I understand why people say that because it sounds like it hurts, right? It's abrasive. Yeah, you know, it's abrasive, it's and song. it sounds like it hurts, and it sounds like it hurts your throat and your Absolutely. lungs and all of your parts. And I used to get like you know these comparisons. Sounds like Lemmy channeling Satan <laughs> through a lung full of broken glass. Fuck I'm yeah. like, <laughs> I mean, wow. and, and I'm like, that's not a bad. It's not. It's a nice comparison. But it also makes me sound like a fucking evil bastard, and I'm not. <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, like, my son's upstairs playing in his room. I have two dogs. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, right. People know me as the hugger. You know yes. what I mean? Like, I, I run around. I hug people. I don't give a fuck. I make it real weird. Like, actually, you yeah. appreciate this. I got, coming back around to how like metal people are the nicest people in the world. Yes, sir. Um, my um, some of my best friends are like guys who look just, just like um like the three of us, right? Yeah. The three of us all look like dirty motherfuckers, <laughs> you know. Um and like one of my favorite people in the world is um my buddy Andy who plays drums in a band called Clam Fight and they're awesome and you should talk to them and I will give awesome. you their information. Um Please. they're amazing. Yeah, and Andy is an amazing dude. He's a, he's an archaeologist. Um oh, very cool. he's very smart. He's very funny. He's a film buff. And whenever, and he, Andy is like my height, a little bit taller. I'm six feet. He's maybe six, two, six, three. He's a huge oh, wow. beard. And, um, and he's just like this, he's an intense drummer, but he's the nicest guy in the world. And we don't get Believe to it. see each other all that often. But when we yeah. do see each other, we hug each other for so long that people start worrying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, and like, it's one of the things that we talk about. It's like, make it uncomfortable for other people. Fuck that. Yeah. Yeah. Like normalize loving on your friends, right? Thank you. That's that's exactly yeah. words out of my mouth, man. We need to normalize that, especially as men. There's nothing wrong with saying to your brother, the fellow person that you fucking that you love yes, him. There's sir. nothing wrong with that, man. I'd I tell say Jim it all, all the time. time that, Same man, here. I, we we say it all the time, dude. I say it to um um. And, and matter of fact, we just did a couple of shows with Clam Fight. They're awesome, so you should definitely look into them. And the other band that we played with were also brothers of ours. They're called End of Hope. You should definitely talk to oh, them cool. as well. They're, um, they're New York hardcore. The nicest okay. guys, like we like, and like, you know, um, Ken, the guitar player, and me, and Andy, my friend Andy, um, are in a group chat that's been going on for like three years now. Oh and wow. All we yeah. do is like all we do is talk about movies and like, you know, other bands, like we'll be catty and bullshit about other bands and stuff like that. But like, we just played with them the other weekend. We played a show in New York and we played a show in Philly. And like, the whole time I'm like, I just have my arms around, you know what I mean? And um, when we That's when we best. played the show in Philly, one of my friends who's in another great band, they're new, so I don't know if they're ready to talk to people yet. But my buddy, whose name is his name is Kermit, but people call him Kit, and I understand why because, you know what I mean? And he's my age, so he grew up in the '70s. This might not have right. the same effect on you, Jai, but um. Do you know Sesame Street? I certainly do. <laughs> okay, so you know Kermit the Frog. Yeah, I was born 1980. I'm, I'm 43 okay, now. So, yeah. so my buddy Kermit grew up, he's my age, so he grew up in the 70s with the name Kermit. Yeah. I don't think you need to say anything more about no. that. Anyway, he's another yeah, one, yeah, one of my favorite yeah. people. He's one of my favorite people in the world. I adore him. And like, we're, he's real weird. Like, we're re we make it real weird for other people. He'll come over, put his arms around me, and like plant his mouth on my cheek and just sit there <laughs> and i'm like bring it on bring it on motherfucker you're not like that that doesn't freak me out at all and i like i um have zero compunctions about showing the people that i love that i love them that's um, like i said in in the scene i'm known as the guy who hugs i hug everyone i love on everybody because you know what nothing is promised to us right yep fucking eyes yes, sir you know, you know, Jai, right? Oh, Nothing's yeah. I, promised. We're oh, going yeah. through it right now, right? Yep. Yep. Um, did you start chemo yet or no? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I've just finished my second round. I'm about to undergo the third round. I go two weeks on, one week off. It's for four okay. months. So I'm about to start my third round on the 25th. So in two okay. days. So, yeah. How's that going? Uh, it knocked me a little the last round to begin with. You know, it's, yeah. you know I'm starting to you get a few side effects, you get a bit cloudy. That's why I kind of booked in a few interviews in the week off. I'm trying to keep things focused on right. better things. And 
this kind of stuff really does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love I'm sorry, support I'm just the asking, scene. But like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, second. But that's bit, what I'm saying. It's like yeah, nothing's it does, guaranteed. It, does, it makes you appreciate it all. And even through, especially this, like makes you realize that nothing is guaranteed. Tell everyone that you love them now because you don't know what's happening tomorrow. Like, you know? Sure. Sure. And it's I'm like, and I, and I don't mean to derail anything, but like, no. I mean, I don't know how COVID hit you guys in Australia, but it beat the yeah. piss out of us here. Yeah, and it like, did. It really did. If, yeah. And like, if you don't know somebody who lost somebody, then you're on Mars. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I lost my fiance. She died in front of me um, in my living room. Um, sorry. Oh boy. I'm sorry. Oh, it's thank you. I mean, I didn't, wasn't saying that for sympathy. No, no, no. Um, I could have, but like, so I'm saying bad. like, I no, I know. I mean, like I lost my, 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 um, my fiance. Um, people lost like almost their whole family. I, I was, I was seeing a woman for a while after my fiance passed, I was seeing this woman for a while. She lost both of her parents to COVID, both within like a month. Yeah. Like that's insane. Like it's insane. So the point is, is like you have to treasure your moments that you have with people. And if you miss the opportunity to tell somebody that you love, that you love them, you just don't miss that opportunity. Just take every yeah. opportunity. Every time you see somebody you give a shit about, every time you see someone you love, Tell them you love them. Yep. It's you know, like it's essential. Yeah. Like oh yeah. Again, I'm oh, not yeah. trying to go to a bummer place. You know, no, no. I'm, it's no, a beautiful this message. Is, this is, this it, is a beautiful is. message, Eric. I um, absolutely well, thank you. absolutely Listen, agree with you, man. Hundred percent. And I, it's something we need to get same. out there and normalize it more. Yeah. Listen, I lost my mom in December. Yep. It wasn't sudden. It wasn't sudden. Like she was she had a stroke and then she got this and then she got that. But one of the reasons, like, I didn't want to see her go. Um, but one of the reasons I was, like, okay with it is because when she was able to still speak and everything, and every time I saw her, even when she couldn't speak anymore, I told her I loved her. And even if she couldn't speak, she'd go, like, you know, and I knew she, what that meant. You know, yeah. she was giving it back to me the best way she could, you know. And if you don't do that, like, that's why I'm at peace with her loss. I miss her every single fucking day. But one of the reasons right. I'm at peace with that loss is because I had the time I was able to say goodbye to her. Hmm. And she knew I loved her and I knew she loved me. And we were able to have that connection. It wasn't sudden. It wasn't like, oh, shit, there were so many things we didn't get to say. No, we got a chance to say all the things we wanted to say. You know what I mean? And that's essential, you know? And that comes around. Um in in everything it comes around to the music right yeah it does like like, you know oh i you know i kind of want to do that someday what's your what what's the hold up do it do the thing yeah you know it's like oh i kind of like when i was saying like oh i kind of want to like learn how to play banjo well okay a cheap banjo is two hundred dollars save two hundred dollars buy a fucking banjo learn how to play it yes you know what i mean um it's not rocket science. It's a banjo. If a bunch of ignorant ass rednecks can play a fucking banjo, certainly an educated person could play a banjo. I already know how to play a guitar. I got the banjo. And also, here's the other thing. And Jim, I think you'll appreciate this. You don't have to play a banjo like a redneck. <laughs> right? Oh, no, no. Yeah, I, I don't play. Yeah. I play uh, a mandolin like James Hetfield. <laughs> That's what I'm so. saying, right? You don't, And you don't have to tune a mandolin like they tell you to yeah i i, I made my own <laughs> same i did the same thing yeah, with yeah. my um with the, i got um josh was out buying um an amplifier and the guy had a, a banjo that he was selling and he texted nice. me he's like yo i'm at this dude's house and the guy has a banjo and he's selling it I'm like what's he want yeah, for yeah. he said 200 bucks i'm like you got 200 on you he said yeah i'm like buy it and i'll pay you back yep so nice. he bought the banjo it's i don't it's i don't know what fucking kind of banjo it is it's a banjo it's you know, got right. the fucking snare head on it and yeah. the five strings and the weird extra string on the top, you know, like yeah. it only oh, goes yeah. halfway. Right. That's a drone right. string. I had no idea. That's a drone string. You're supposed to, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, there's no rule that says you have to tune a banjo like a fucking redneck. I have mine right. tuned to like all D's and G's because that's what I felt like tuning it to. And that's where it holds yeah. tune the that's where it holds tune the best, you know? Right. Um, um my buddy who produced the the first record with us um, was known for playing ukulele. 
Nice. That was his thing. And um, so anything with four strings on it that was guitarish was his it was his jam. So yeah. consequently, Jim, you'll really appreciate this. He had a custom made um resonator, like an all metal resonator guitar. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. With a pickup in it. Nice. And it was a tenor resonator, so it only had the four strings on it. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, so and and he's like, Yeah, most people will take this and tune it to an open tuning and play slide on it, but that's not what I do. And I'm like, Okay. Yeah. And um yeah. and he's like, Yeah, make up your own tuning with it. Go do go get crazy with it. I was like, Okay. And like yeah. I made up a tuning that was like all D's and A's and I think maybe a G in there or something. But like and then I just figured out, you know, like you just fuck around. Yep. Um Yes, sir. You know, um, what's the name of that? Uh do you know GHS guitar pedals? J oh, yeah. Uh, JHS, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they have like a YouTube channel. And um on one of the things they do, they have this this recurring segment that they do. It's called Just Try Stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 And like so they'll do shit like they're like, Yeah, I'm plugging this pedal into this, and then I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that, and I'm just gonna see what happens. And oh, good to that know. Yeah. idea of just trying stuff. Shit, you would know this, Jim. Like on the first monster magnet record. I remember reading interviews with Dave Windorf and he's like, they're like, what did you, in this interview, they asked him like, what did you use for amps? He's like, man, if I could plug into a toaster, I'd plug into that. Yes. You know, just to yeah. see what the fuck it sounds like. And I'm yeah. like, um, I'm like, yes, that's exactly how I want to, that, that mindset has never left me, you know? And so like, now I'm like learning about all these things. Like, for example, did you know you can take a guitar pedal, any guitar pedal, right? Yeah. Run the input, the output to the input. Okay. And you need one of the, a special uh quarter inch cable that has an extra uh output on it. Yeah. So okay. you run the output into the input, and then you take the signal that's from that and run it into yeah. like a little mixer. Yeah. And what that does is it feeds into itself and it creates a feedback loop. Oh, interesting. Instant synthesizer. Yeah, right. And the shittier the pedal, the better, the crazier the noises. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Because then you can take okay. that signal into your board and run it through delays and run it right. through flanges and yeah, run yeah. it, you know, again, just try stuff, you know, like, yeah. just try yeah. stuff, see what happens. And I was watching this guy on YouTube and he had like this, there was like a Behringer fuzz pedal, like one of those yeah. FZ ones. Like they're shitty. Like they're $20. Yeah. They're crap crap but he did that trick to it and it sounded awesome and then you start turning the knobs and you go like all this weird shit sounds like a husky like fucking set on fire it's awesome <laughs> like that stuff is awesome and like yeah just try shit just try you know yeah, yeah. so for sure it, and that's gotta be a part of your development as an artist to push yourself to do something different sometimes you know yeah yeah yeah, even like, yeah, like as you that. said, there just to try shit, Eric. Like, even not only as an artist and a musician, but as a person at, at anything yeah. in life, is there something you want to do? Just fucking do it. Yeah. Get in there and give it a go because we can come up with a million reasons why we shouldn't fucking do it. And I probably would have done the same if I overthought what I was doing five years ago when I started all this music media shit. I probably wouldn't right. have done it because I could have come up with a million reasons why I fucking shouldn't do it. I'm like, fuck right. it. I'm why it won't work. This. Yeah, why mm -hmm. I shouldn't do it, why it won't work. And I'm like, right. I'm just going to do why it. Why it's a waste of – right. And you're like, uh, yeah, okay, you can talk yourself out of most things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, you should – I don't know, just man. Just try it's things. Like just give it a go, man. Just give everything a go in life. The Fuck. worst thing – like, I mean, I'm not saying, like, you know what you should really try? Crystal meth. That's good. Like, yeah, not I'm not that. saying that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not exactly. saying, like, you know what you should try and do? Inject some heroin. It's great. Yeah. You know? Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying that. Saying that exactly. I'm saying, but I'm saying like you know, what's the worst thing? You, I mean, I, and it's like it's everything, right? Like I'm not saying not to be a gentleman, but I'm saying like if you mm. see a woman and you're a straight guy and you're attracted to women, the worst thing that can happen, she's not interested, right? Mm, right. And be, I'm not saying be a dick. Don't be a dick. Don't oh, be a yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't be a right. And on the same note, be the bloke that stands up to the guy that's being the dick to the woman too. There you go, Eric. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. But what you do, and and don't expect anything from it. That's it. If we right. stand up, yeah, like she doesn't owe you shit. No one owes you shit. If they don't owe you. Great. She and doesn't that owe you life shit doesn't owe you, you shit. That's the same message. Life doesn't owe you anything. You got to go out there and fucking give it a go and have a fucking crack at it. 
precisely precisely so but that's my point though it's like so you see this woman you find her attractive you're into chicks the worst thing that can happen is like she doesn't she doesn't respond to your advances okay you right. go over and say like hey you know i saw you across the room i just think you're really amazing looking i'd love to get to know you can i buy you a drink she says no you just be like okay just you know had to shoot my shot as the kids like to say <laughs> had to shoot my shot see what happened you're not into it you're not into it it's cool yeah uh never awesome. would have known what would have happened if i didn't say hi That's shit it. you do that you could right. wind up with a supermodel you don't know yeah exactly people like sincerity people like honesty so you know walk up and be like i find you incredibly attractive you know and like that's a higher stakes thing because you can get embarrassed right oh yeah yeah sure a way lower stakes thing is to be like i'm gonna try and put a synthesizer on the stoner rock song exactly Motherfucker, yeah, if you don't yeah, put a yeah, synthesizer yeah. If you don't plug in a goddamn synthesizer right this fucking minute, I swear to God, I'm going to murder you. Yeah, you know what I mean? You like, with that synthesizer. <laughs> right? And listen, um, I don't know if you're aware of, like, there's a couple of other pieces of material. You'll find them on YouTube, um, on our on our YouTube channel. But before yeah. we put out Magnasonic, we put out, um, I want to say three or four, what we call promo songs with videos. Yep. And we did, like, we did a couple of them. One was, like, primarily a drum solo with some instrumentation around it. Another one was like very psychedelic hippie song. And then we had another one that was like, I would, I want to say it was like a cross between the Isley brothers and like Dr. Dre. Yep. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we recorded the one that sounded like the, the backbeat sounded like Dr. Dre to me, I'm like, guys, don't be mad at me, but I'm going to go home and put like a, a Moog synthesizer part over it because it sounds like something from the chronic. Yep. And the guys were like, Go for what you know, man. Go for it. See what happens. So I put in like a thing on top of it. And I'm like, if you guys hate it, I'll take it out. But I have to tell you, I think it belongs. Yep. And they're like, well, let's hear it. And they played it. And I'm, they're like, yeah, that's fucking awesome. Like, right. you know, again, just try stuff. Like, just yeah. fucking, you know, like, do you God. think the Beatles would have been amazing like they are if they didn't put like a string section on I Am The Walrus? Yeah, see that. Right. You know, like what artist. a weird fucking song, and it's it's bonkers. Like what's going on in there, or or like being for the benefit of Mister Kite, <laughs> with that weird part in the middle where it's like, you know how they made that middle part? I they had a whole part recorded, like a whole orchestral part recorded for the for the middle eight, yep. And they didn't like it, and so John Lennon went in and took that piece of tape and cut it up into all little pieces, and then gave it to the intern and said tape this back together in whatever order you like. And he taped it back together, spliced it together, mm. and they listen to it. Some of it's backwards, some of it's forwards. It's none of it's related to any. It's like, gee, I'm not the guy like all this shit. It sounds amazing. Yep. Yeah. And it's like and it was random. They didn't know they didn't and then remember that was did that was audio tape back then. That was yeah, two inch right. tape that he went in with a razor and just yeah, cut it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then did this and said here <laughs> put that in there and you got what you got now that is probably one of the ultimate versions of just try stuff yeah you know like that is like probably the king of just try stuff like yeah. you know whatever that's the beatles of just trying stuff you know what i mean like but anyway yeah like so yeah that's what we kind of that's what we do you know um, uh, and speaking so of, I've got to ask about this full of silliness intro. I was going to ask about it earlier on. What's, what is what's, it? What's the deal with that YouTube video? I'll share it for you, man. That recent one you just put up there. Oh, yeah. We just put that up. Um... Yeah. Yeah. That's it. yeah. <laughs> There's Jackie Boy. Wow. Um... <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I love the the full house font. Yeah, the full house. That's what it was. Full it was house us, I mean, the song is yeah, the full house the song, theme. Have the full house yeah, yeah. song. I don't want to apply it just in case YouTube flags me, but yeah. Correct. But, so but, I, I can tell you exactly how that happened. Um, we were at rehearsal and Jack had his keyboard set up and he started playing the full house theme <laughs> just because he's a silly man. And he's just like, dee, 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 you know, you know, playing it. And we started laughing and I'm like, you know what? We should like, do that song and put video to it and it's just us instead of them it's like funny. the intro of the show is yeah. that and like we started laughing and like mike's like we we could do that because mike's a very talented video editor he did that yeah. cool. he found the song 
he, we shot all the stuff at re, at our rehearsal space. Like all that's just shot in our yeah. room and at the rehearsal studio. And like, so we watched the intro a bunch of times. So there's a shot in there of Jack laying on the couch playing a keyboard and he's kicking his little feet up over his head like the little girl yeah, in yeah, the yeah. Intro for Full House. Yeah. And I'm like, Jack, you don't have a hair on your ass if you don't fucking lay on the couch and play the <laughs> keyboard like you're a happy little girl, yeah. you know? And so we just did all shtick like that was in it's i mean it was the what was it like the late 80s and it's like cheese big time but you know it's fucking funny and like it's right it's fun and again too many people in the stoner doom community are way too serious yeah we're all fucking chill out man we're stoned motherfucker have some fun with it (laughs) i mean and also i'm sorry this is another pet peeve that i have um it's fun. Playing music is fun. It's a good yeah. time. Um, playing music with your friends is a super good time. Playing music with your friends in front of other people, it's an incredibly good time. If I'm playing and I look across the stage and I see fucking our drummer, Mikey, getting down, doing his thing, throwing his hair, doing, you know, being Mikey, I'll look at him and I'll give him a big ass smile. I don't give a fuck. What, yeah. When did that happen that you're not allowed to smile at people on stage? Yeah. When did that yeah. happen? When, right. like, why? Oh, and the other one is, it's like, you put out a record or whatever, and you go like, yeah, check out my record or like, whatever. Dude, didn't you just bust your ass for months making that record? It's not like, or whatever. It's like, look, my heart beats in this fucking thing. It means a lot to me. You should listen to it. Like, you know, give it a shot. I'm not down with this whole cooler than, too cool for school bullshit. You know, like where, you know, you're uh you know that hipster bullshit thing where it's yeah. like if um if i don't look a hundred percent right or whatever it's you know what it is it's too much work to be yeah. fake like that. if you're super cool if you're lemmy and you're super fucking cool all the time then god bless you but very few people are like that and can pull off yeah. being cool all the time so bottom line is Anytime you're in a band or in a situation where you have to be cool all the time, you're setting yourself up to fail. Right. Because the minute someone sees you pick up a puppy, you're suddenly not the toughest motherfucker in the world anymore because you're holding a cute little right. puppy. Right. As soon as you do the, oh, it's a cute little yeah. puppy. Look at him. Yeah. The minute you get caught like snuggling a puppy, that's no, why we all love George part. Corpse Grinder because he's out afraid of fucking snuggling With, the tenants yeah. on the toys and <laughs> yeah, he loves it. yeah, and it's great. Yeah, I mean, well, that's the thing, you know, like Cannibal Corpse, they're a bunch of nerds. I know, they're a I'm, bunch of yeah, Paul's the top a bunch guy, of horror, book, know, horror yeah. comic book nerds, and I love that. You know, I love that they're not all like we drink the blood of infants. No, they're like, they're like, no, we have kids, we have wives, we love, we have love. Paul recently you know? dropped a really killer album. It was a rock album with a band called Umbilicus. He formed a band called Umbilicus, real 70s kind of fucking vibe yeah. to it, real rocky. It was cool as fuck, man. I think it dropped last year. Cool yeah, album. Like, that kind of shit, that's awesome. Like, <laughs> and like the whole thing where it's like, listen, it's the Stoner Doom thing. There's so many people who are like, if I don't look like it's 1974, then I'm fucking up. Yeah. And like, right. here's my thing. That it it looks cool. Like if you can pull off that look, God bless you. Cause I can't. I'm a fat motherfucker. And um I just don't look cool in like fucking uh I don't like I don't I have never tried. All right, I'll be I'll admit it to you. But like I've never tried wearing like white cowboy boots and uh yeah, you know what I mean? Like white cowboy boots and bell bottoms and like a giant belt with a big buckle on it and like no shirt and like a leather vest or something. I've never right. tried to do that because, first of all, I'd feel fake. That's not me. You know what I mean? Like, I would right. feel like a big right. phony. And second of all, um, if that if you set the precedent that that's what your deal is, the minute you run out to the store to get a pint of ice cream at night in your sweats, yeah, guess who's not cool anymore? You right. see what I'm saying? Like, the minute somebody manages to peep you out of character, you're not cool anymore. Yeah, you know, what I mean? um, and like, that's just too much work, dude. That's oh, just too much work. You know, like I don't have the energy. You know, having said that, I don't own anything in my wardrobe that isn't black. There's not. I don't. 
<laughs> but I mean, I'm also been buying my own clothes, you know, for the last, you know, fucking 40 years. So um, I've amassed quite a number of black shirts. Garments. <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of clothes. Like every respectable like, metalhead. <laughs> right. And none of it's not black. Yeah. It's all black. Even my socks are black. Like, <laughs> like it's just that's my thing. You know, I like black. It's I find it easy to wear, um, mm. etc. But like I'm definitely not going out of my way to like I don't know how like the goth motherfuckers do it, you know, who put in like the fangs and the different colored oh, eyes. Fucking platforms and the fucking makeup and shit every day. Good on them. All right. Like, I love so much work. Yeah. You know what the sad part is like that kid does that and then goes and get goes to work at like fucking Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Right. You know, it's like um, you know, and then what do you have to do? It's like, yeah. Uh Azriel Abyss, please come to aisle seven. Azriel Abyss. <laughs> like, um, you know, and it's the same thing with what you call it, juggalos. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right? Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, those right. guys all have, but they can't go by their juggalo names all the time. You know, yeah. like, Stab Master Arson. Stab Master Arson, come to aisle three. Murder, be- murder bitch tampon, come to oh. aisle. Three. I mean, like, you can't. Like, you yeah. can't. Like, how, how do you live hey, that way? Penny, we got cleanup. <laughs> right, right, exactly. It's like, it's like, it's like, yeah, I'm sorry. You're going to have to, like, I can't, like, look at you and take you seriously with your fucking white contact lenses in. I'm sorry. I can't. Yeah, like, I see can't. That. I don't know where you're looking. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know? Uh, cool. So, um, you know, chatting- I can't. I want to come back to Thunderbird Divine there. Yeah. Eric, um, yes, sir. I could chat all night, my friend. Um, it's been an absolute blast. I dare say the, the couple of covers you've released to kind of a little bit just to tease the, the the listeners out there, the fans kind of, that you yeah. do have some new material coming. It's kind of a little yeah. bit of a, this is what's going on. A couple of fun, cool covers to release. What's the plans for some new stuff, man? So we're actually in the process of nailing down. We have about eight songs that are going to go on the next album. It'll come out on Salt of the Earth. And um, like I said, there's about eight songs. And let's see, what can you expect? Um, uh, Well, I told you about the didgeridoo. And I told you about the banjo. Um, Believe it or not, we have a hurdy-gurdy. Nice. Oh, that's cool. Like an actual hurdy gurdy. Like we'll definitely old... catch up as well, Eric. So I don't give away too many details. Keep them guessing. We'll, well um, catch I mean, up listen, when the you don't know where it is. Due, you know, due to be it's released true. as well. When you get a bit closer to release, people keep your eyes out and jump Thank over you. to Thunderburn Divine. Um, give them a like, follow, subscribe. We will definitely catch up again when the album is closer to release. This has been. I would appreciate that. That's an awesome. Absolute blast, oh, awesome. my friend. Wonderful um, talking to you. Absolutely great to catch up with Thank you. Thank you guys um, for having me. Any shows you want to plug quickly, my friend? Uh, yeah, actually a couple. So cool. Um, on the third of June, uh, here in Philly, we'll be uh playing at a place called Silk City, and we are going huh. to uh, uh, be celebrating the release of our friends. There's a band called High Leaf from Philly. They're putting out their first record, mm. and so we're playing their record release party. That's the third, okay. and then the twenty third, the twenty fourth, and the twenty fifth. The twenty fifth, we're playing the Maryland Doom Fest, which is a highly esteemed uh, Doom. Even I've heard that. Even I've heard that all the way over here. Have you been, Jim? Have you been, Jim? I haven't, but it's it's near me in Frederick usually. Yes, it's it's always in Frederick. Um, Yeah. um, Should you have interest in going, you should reach out to JB. Yeah, reach out to press. Reach out to JB. He's the guy who runs it. JB Madsen. He's a fucking ace, and he'll give you press credentials like that. I mean, all you have to do is send him a link to the show, and he'll he'll have you in, and he'll he'll Great. comp you for the weekend. And um, so we're doing the Doom Fest um on the that Sunday, the twenty fifth, with like yeah. the the rundown of bands that are playing throughout those uh three days. It's insane. Like the the rundown is like I can't even remember all of them, it's but insane. they're all awesome. They're all awesome. I think I think like Cathedral and like Bonzilla are gonna be there and stuff like that. I don't it's know. crazy. Um, I gotta look I at the poster. They used but, to. I can't remember. Yeah, that's year. what I'm doing right now too. <laughs> yeah, let me see I who's say, on the bill. I uh, Skull. Low Pan. Low Pan. Uh, yeah. Let's Here we go. See. Let's see. Black uh, Long. the Skull, Brimstone Coven, Conclave, Black Lung, Shadow Witch, Switchblade, Black Jesus, Lopan, Earthride, 
Hollow mm-hmm. Leg, Mythosphere, Baracho, Los Cruces, and of course a little band called Thunderbird Divine. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, I mean, just a ton of bands. And it, you know, one of Put the up best on the main list about- there too, bro. Yeah, we got a name in the big text, didn't that? Yeah, nice? big bro. Um, cool. Yeah, that was I, that was the JB did us a solid with that. That was really nice of him to. No, big dude. Text. Dude, we'll go. We'll go to if it's in Frederick, man. We'll go to uh, Old Mother Hubbard or one of the breweries or or whatever. Yeah, Old Mother and, Breweries. Um, it's, it's literally right across the street from each other. This is Cafe, it at Six Eleven. Cafe Six Eleven over here. I Old just Mother played there. <laughs> yeah. So like the two places are awesome. like literally diagonal across the street from each other. Cool. Reach out to JB or if you want, I'll give you. I'll no, introduce I'll, you whatever you want. Um, absolutely. I'll, you there. I'll be down. I'll be down. Yeah. Dude. Um, so those are the ones I want to plug. And then coming this fall, a uh, new record. It's We don't have a name for it yet. It's probably going to have a stupid name because we're stupid. I don't. We might call it the Pony <laughs> Express because that's funny. Fuck yes. um, um, and yeah, look us, look for us to be playing around um, quite a bit more. Uh, we just, I literally came just before I came to talk to you guys, we yeah. just bought our van. We just bought, bought a van. Like literally, nice. I bought, I got on with you guys at eight we finished the paperwork on the van at seven <laughs> no, ah, we just bought cool. a 15 passenger ford um econoline uh look van out america thunderbird if i have a van now fuck yeah yeah look out motherfuckers yeah we're, we're it's, coming it's, for it's you. On. any yeah, last dude. words so, shout outs thank you is there anything else you'd like to add in there my friend hey listen okay. blessings and 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 love to you guys for being amazing and thank like, you for sir. hosting me and letting me letting me run my mouth like this you know um, Brilliant. i'm sure you know, sees it are gonna be like yep that's eric all right just running his fucking mouth talking over everybody no that's no 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 go. it's it's brilliant we that's love it brilliant, much brother. love Thank brother you. everybody go out throw some love towards thunderbird divine Indeed. um get on their band camp buy their stuff go over to their stream all their stuff the neighbor's gonna want to hear it as well eric thank you very much from jim <laughs> and myself my, absolute bloody my pleasure thank you guys Cheers, mate thank, thank you, you. Oi, you know what time it is, you're tuning in, listening to Joy, that Aussie metal guy. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of his content when it drops. And remember, stay brutal, you mad dogs. Roof!